Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets FX Week Ahead podcast with Lee Hardman, Senior Currency Analyst at MUFG. It's Friday the 9th of August 2024 and joining Lee to pose some questions on the financial market themes for the week ahead is Seiko Kasioka Fisher, Vice President from Japanese Customer Sales for EMEA in London. The following podcast is intended for professional investors and eligible counterparties only and not for retail clients. Any content should not be regarded as an offer to conduct investment business or an investment recommendation, but for information purposes only. Hi, Lee. Hi, Psycho. It has been another volatile week for the financial markets. What have been the main drivers? Uh, Yeah, like you said, it's been another incredibly volatile week, uh, particularly the start of this week when we saw Japanese equity market selling off and falling by almost 13% on on Monday when we came in. And that did lead to some further uh, strength in the yen, as we saw the liquidation there of of, of yen-funded carry trades. And that that pushed dollar-yen back below the 142 level. So we've now fallen uh, by over 20 big figures from the highs in in early July. So it's been uh, by far the biggest correction lower for dollar yen since this uptrend started a couple of years ago, which is certainly giving us more confidence that um, we have now seen the peak in this cycle for dollar yen and that the trend is now turning uh, to the downside for dollar yen going forward. Having said that, though, obviously, since the uh, the sell off at the start of this week, we have seen since then a recovery in um, risk assets and uh, high beta currencies. Um, there have been a couple of drivers for this tentative improvement in risk sentiment over the last couple of days. Firstly, we had some comments from uh, BOJ Deputy Governor Achida-san, who came out to try and provide provide some reassurance to market participants that the BOJ isn't necessarily on the path to a faster pace of rate hikes going forward. He emphasized that the BOJ obviously will take into consideration um, financial market conditions. And if they remain unstable, as we've seen in recent days, then the BOJ won't be uh, raising rates further. So while that's obvious, I think it does provide some some relief for, for markets, at least in, in the near term. Although we would highlight, obviously, that other developments in Japan over the last week, including the stronger cash earnings data and also the, the release of the minutes from the last meeting, were on the more hawkish side and did provide support for the BOJ's decision to do, uh, to keep raising rates. So we're still kind of sticking to our view that we think they'll they'll raise rates further, but I guess the probability of them hiking again by the end of this year has diminished following the comments from Achida-san. Uh, and then the second driver for this turnaround or improvement in, in risk sentiment in recent days was the release yesterday of the latest initial claims data from the US. Um, that did drop back in the latest week um, and did provide some reassurance there that the uh, labor market is not slowing uh, more sharply after the uh, the release of the soft payroll report for, for July. Uh, that did heighten concerns that we could see a sharper slowdown in the labor market. And um, it certainly was was reassuring that that doesn't appear to be the case in the uh, the claims data yesterday. Okay, well, uh, what are the key events to watch out for in the week ahead? Yeah, I think certainly this week going forward, again, I think for FX markets as the driver, I think it's going to be a case of kind of risk on, risk off trading. Um, obviously, if we continue to see a, tentative improvement in risk sentiment. And if the yen continues to stabilize, then we could see some potential for further gains for uh, the high beta G10 currencies, such as the commodity currencies and the pound. Whereas if the uh, if, if the improvement in sentiment uh, proves to be short-lived, then we would certainly see then potential for, for the yen and Swiss franc to, to bounce back. So I think that's going to be the kind of key, key determinant in terms of FX performance. Like you say, there are also some important uh, events to watch out for the, in the week ahead as well. Get the release of the latest US CPI report um, for July. Um, our expectation is that we should see some further evidence there of slowing inflation again in the US um, for the third consecutive month, which should give the Fed more confidence to start cutting rates in September. And as we highlighted last week after the softer payrolls report, we do think that it's looking more likely now that the Fed has fallen behind the curve somewhat in terms of cutting rates. And that is increasing the likelihood that they could start their cutting cycle in September by delivering uh, a larger 50 basis point uh, rate cut. Uh, Here in the UK, we'll also get the release of the latest CPI and labour market data. We're still of the view that the Bank of England 
is likely to wait a bit longer now before cutting rates again, sticking to our view that the next cut from the Bank of England is likely to be delivered in November. Um, if they're to cut rates earlier at, at the next meeting, we'll certainly need to see clearer evidence of, of slowing uh, inflation in the service sector and also further slow down in, in wage growth in, in the UK. So next week could be important from that perspective and could pose some downside risks for the pound. And then finally, we also have the um, RBNZ policy meeting in the week ahead. Um, going into that meeting, it certainly looks a close call uh, over whether the RBNZ will start to cut rates next week or potentially even uh, indicate that uh, that they are moving closer to cutting rates, maybe at the next meeting in, in October. And we do expect a, certainly a big dovish policy shift from, from the RBNZ next week to kind of acknowledge that the economy has weakened again recently um, after obviously a, a weak period slash recession over the previous kind of six to 12 months and with inflation falling as well in, in New Zealand. It's becoming harder and harder, we think, for the RBNZ to justify keeping rates at such high levels. So we, we do think there is certainly ample room there for them to start cutting rates. And we do think that could provide further impetus for further weakness uh, in the Kiwi going forward. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this MUFG Global Markets podcast. Rate, review and subscribe and contact your MUFG sales rep for more information. Come back next week for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.